guys, Dan here from Epic Drives Western Australia. I'm just stuck here in the standard peak hour traffic and dreaming of my next four wheel drive trip. Now, I'm not sure if you're like me, but I enjoy preparing for a off-road trip about as much as I do as the trip itself. And the reason for that is it kind of sets my mind on the journey and what I can expect each day. Now, if you're preparing for a standard road trip, all you really need to do is plot your GPS location, pack some clothes, maybe some food for the road and stop off at the petrol station along the way. But if you are preparing for an off-road trip, there's a fair bit more involved to make sure that you not only have a more enjoyable trip, but that you have a safer trip as possible. So I'll run you through the ways that I prepare for a trip and if you're new to four-wheel driving hopefully I can give you some really good advice and if you're a seasoned off-roader perhaps you do do things differently but maybe I can give you some ideas that you can use for preparing for your next trip and maybe you do do things in a much more simpler way let us know in the comment section below anyway let's get stuck into it okay so the first thing I do when planning a trip is to think about the time of year and the locations that would be most suitable for four wheel driving and what weather I can expect, particularly the fire season. So as a rough guide, I consider inland trips to be a winter location and during summer, it's all about coastal locations. So let's start with summer, that's sort of November through to February. Now with average temperatures of between 30 to 19 degrees, only one day of rain a month, I head south, as far south as I can, with the time that I have available. It's all about coastal drives, swimming, fishing, and of course, flies and bloody mozzies. Now, crowds are typical for this time of year. Some suggestions would be Don Castro National Park, Fish Creek, or the Cape to Cape off-road track. Autumn, which is March through the May, is the ideal time to head north to places like Cervantes, Lancelin, and Sandy Cape. Winter, June through to August, is all about being in the bush, camping around a campfire, cooking and relaxing with mates. Think of places like Kaji Kaji, Ningen Station and Southern Cross. June through to September is wildflower season and the wheat belt is the place to be. Mount Palmer, Meriden and Roadsea are excellent this time of year. The next thing to consider is how long you intend on traveling. One big mistake is to plan a long distance trip with a short window of travel time. It's one thing to say you've driven through a region and another to say that you've truly discovered it. So make sure you leave a window of an extra one to two days to allow yourself time to immerse yourself in the surroundings instead of just flying through places and missing a perfect sunset or a hidden gem somewhere in the bush. The next consideration is to consider whether you're going alone or who is going to be joining you in either your car or as part of your convoy. For starters, you should always have at least one other vehicle with you on any off-road trip, unless you're completely confident in both you and your vehicle's ability. You need to be completely honest in your ability to be able to handle the conditions that you expect to encounter. Let's take the trip I'm planning to take next. I've considered the time of year being September. I've researched the areas that would be suitable for this time of year and have decided on heading out to the Southern Cross region. So let's run through the weeks leading up to the trip and there's a number of items that I use. The first thing I do is research and for that I use a number of items. We live in the ridiculously good age of Google and this should be your first step in any trip planning. Search the area for historic locations, national parks, permits, camping spots, restrictions, as well as searching for images of the region. Next, do a search on Facebook and Instagram for inspiration. And if you see something you like, send the person who posted the content a message asking for things like their recommendations and if they can provide GPS waypoints. Speaking of Facebook, join as many four-wheel drive pages as you can, as well as any pages in the region that you intend to travel. Now, if you wanna take some of the guesswork out of plotting a track yourself, 
Grab yourself one of the books by Western Four Wheel Driver. It's WA's own four wheel drive magazine. They do a series of books called the Explorer Series and they're an invaluable resource for four wheel drive trips all over WA. For this trip, I'm gonna be taking the trip notes from four wheel drive weekends out of Perth. The one I've got is the fourth edition and this valuable book only cost me 20 bucks, which is ridiculously good value. This book covers the areas within a couple of hundred kilometers of Perth and has the perfect trip for the location that I've decided. So here we go, Mount Palmer, page 20. Now whilst you could go and simply follow the trip notes by measuring the kilometers traveled and resetting your odometer for each turn, there is a better method that while it takes a bit more time, will help you to ensure that you stick to the right tracks and this is how I do it. First up, you'll need a computer. Head to Google Earth and download Google Earth Pro. It is free. Then type in the first waypoint like this. Don't worry about the degrees, seconds and minutes symbols. Then using the distance measuring tool and selecting path, carefully follow the road until you've measured out the correct distance and record the details of each waypoint. Go ahead and plot all the GPS waypoints from the trip. Continue to plot each of the driving details like this until you've completed each step. This will take a while, but the benefit of this is firstly getting a good idea of where you're going and also visualizing the type of terrain that you can expect to encounter as well as seeing other possible points of interest along the way. Another thing to do is read through the information about the trip. Some of the trip may be of interest to you, others maybe not. Make notes of what you want to see and do and try to factor in how long you expect to take at each location. Okay, so you have the trip plotted on Google Earth. The next thing that I recommend that you get your hands on is the Western Australia Road and Four Wheel Drive Track Atlas by HEMA. You can get them online or you can go to your local four wheel drive or outdoor store. Cost you around 35 bucks. Now with the map book, Use the index section to find the first waypoint. With a highlighter, mark the tracks that you'll be taking. Now if the track's not printed, try to map it out as best you can. Once you're done, take a photo. You can send this to a friend or a family member as a guide as to where you'll be, along with where you'll expect to be camping each day should something happen. Now just a quick side note on the Western Four Wheel Driver trip notes. You'll notice a section within each individual trip titled Recommended Maps. Now if you find it necessary, you can find these maps. They're available from the Chart and Map Shop in Fremantle and you can simply just order them online and choose to either pick it up in person or have it mailed to your address. Now I like to buy them as more of a souvenir than anything else. But if you do decide to purchase a map, make sure you not only bring it along but learn how to use a compass and a map. It is a good idea because you can't always rely on technology, especially when you're out in the bush. Okay, so now hopefully your mind started to daydream a little bit as to how the trip's gonna play out. The next thing that you'll need to do is work out how many days you're gonna take, how many kilometers you're gonna travel, and how much fuel you're gonna need. And another good app that's a good idea to grab is called Fuel Map Australia and follow your intended path and add in all the service stations that are nearby. Now comes the most expensive part of your trip planning. If you don't already own an off-road GPS mapping system, you'll need to download HEMA Explorer on your phone. It costs 50 bucks per year, but compared to a dedicated off-road GPS system, this is a bargain. And now for the time consuming exercise. Head back into Google Earth Pro and open HEMA maps on your phone or your tablet and copy each waypoint into your HEMA. The reason I add all the trip notes onto Google first is to utilize the distance measuring tool that HEMA unfortunately doesn't have. If HEMA were to provide this tool, it would save a heap of time. Once you've done this, your mapping is complete. The next thing to think about is what equipment that you're gonna to need to take with you. Now, barring recovery gear and emergency gear, as a general rule, if I haven't taken it on at least the last three trips, I don't bother bringing it. Now, to help me pack, 
I use an app called Camping Assistant. It's very, very basic, but it is free. Under the essentials list, I add every single item I've ever used for road trips, four wheel driving trips, as well as camping. Then I simply scroll down the list and add a tick next to what I'll need for this specific trip. Once it's packed, I just go back through the list to ensure that it's there. No more rocking up to a campsite without a tent or forgetting an air compressor or even something as simple as a phone charger or the hammer for the tent pegs. Now next up is food and for this you can keep it simple. You could just take freeze dried meals with you that only require a little bit of hot water or you could plan an extravagant campfire cook up to feature as one of the highlights of the trip. You'll also need to consider food for when you're on the road, breakfast, lunch, and where you expect to be stopping for those meals, as well as how much time you'll have to prepare, eat, and clean up. Now there's an endless amount of video on YouTube based around campfire cooking. So if you have an interest in cooking, be sure to check out a few videos for inspiration. Add all the items that need to be purchased to your list of food, drinks, and any other items that you need, and head out shopping. Try to avoid food that perishes quickly, especially if you don't have a fridge in your vehicle. There's nothing worse than salad, meat, and cheese swimming around at the bottom of your semi-defrosted esky with all the flavors combining together and absorbed by your loaf of bread. So my general rule is the less items that need to be kept cool, the better. Save your esky for beer and soft drink. If you do intend on spending a lot of time out on the road, seriously consider getting yourself a fridge freezer. The most popular brands are Waco and the legendary brand Engel. Prices range from around $500 to $2,000. A crucial part in trip planning is to ensure that your car is serviced. So if it's due, make sure you get it done before you go. A few days before your trip, check your vehicle's transmission and engine oil, brake fluid, radiator coolant, your wiper fluid, fan belts, hoses, air filters, as well as tire pressure and wear. Make sure you check your spare as well and make sure that your tire jack is accessible. Repeat this check on the day of your trip. If you have any doubts about your car's condition, don't go until you've got whatever needs fixing fixed. Nothing ruins a trip more than mechanical issues, especially when you're aware of the potential problems before you leave. Now the bush is not a place you wanna be stuck and recovering a broken down four wheel drive off road can cost thousands. Okay, so everything is packed, everyone's excited. Make yourself a tea or a coffee and sit down. Go through your maps and your checklist to ensure you've not forgotten anything. Last thing to do before you race out is to hide all the valuable items in your house, shut the blinds and curtains, leave a light on, and make sure all the doors are locked and you're ready. Now, if you are meeting people on the way, make sure you choose somewhere that's easy to find, like a shopping center or a petrol station, and that everyone's aware of what UHF channel that you're gonna be using. Last thing to remember is to enjoy yourself. You've done all the stressful work of preparing. Now it's time to relax and enjoy. Four-wheel driving and camping is both rewarding and memorable. It's an excellent way to de-stress and spend quality time with family and friends. However, it can be challenging and things often don't go exactly as planned. It's important to keep a positive attitude and just go with the flow. If you're brand new to four-wheel driving, start with a day trip and work up to an overnight trip and eventually extend it to multi-day trips as you acquire the required equipment and skills. Just remember to keep it simple and leave the stresses of everyday life behind. Life is an adventure, best discovered in four-wheel drive. So as you can see, there is a fair bit involved in planning for an off-road trip, but proper trip preparation can be a lot of fun and it does ensure that you have the most enjoyable time possible. But how you prepare is going to be based on 
firstly where you're going and your individual requirements if you're going alone if you're going with your family if you're going with friends so in reality I've only really just begun to scratch the surface of what's required in organizing an off-road adventure so let me know down in the comments section if I've missed anything out Chuck us a like if you enjoyed watching this and if you are new around here please consider subscribing and click the bell so you'll get an alert when my next video is out. And don't forget to check out the other content that's on my page. I've got trips that I've done plus some advice. It may not be expert advice, it's just personal advice that I've learned along the way. And I've got some great trips planned now that the weather is finally starting to warm up. So anyway. That's about it. We got through a lot of information in a very short period of time, but whew, whew, we did it. Anyway, I'm Dan. This has been Epic Drives Western Australia. Catch ya. Doing my trip.